From the moment that the public got to know the Enigma variations, everybody had their own view about what the Enigma meant. And many pieces of writing were done to expose the truth. And Elgar wouldn't give way. The one that has latched onto me most, I don't know, grippingly, is the idea that it's something to do with our country. His friend, this young girl, who became very attached to him and who is enshrined in the work in the variation entitled Dora Bella, was a girl called Dora Penny. And they saw each other a lot and they became very fond of each other in a sort of godfatherly little girl sort of way. They were very different in age. And he said once to her, I'm surprised that you of all people haven't realised what this theme is. On the back of a penny sits the figure of, Ru of Britannia ruling the waves. And a, a later letter, I think, he said, perhaps even to her again, whatever anybody may think, I promise you, I will never, never reveal the secret. Britain never, never shall be slaves, is the last line of Rule Britannia. And it may be that he was dropping a few little hints, I don't know. But not only that, in the opening of this great work, the violins play the notes, -da 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 -da, which is a sad version of -da -da -da, Britain never, never never shall be slaves. You could say that it, it shadows the melody of Rule Britannia, but in the minor key, in the melancholy key. There's another tiny hint hidden in the variation that is about a bulldog. It purports to be about the bulldog's owner, the organist of Hereford Cathedral, George Sinclair. And he had this bulldog, famous bulldog, called Dan, who Elgar knew. And the variation is about the bulldog, not the organist. It's about the bulldog jumping into the river and barking madly, um, chasing something, and swimming a bit and then jumping out and shaking himself. And it's not really about its owner at all. Could there be a suspicion here that one of George Sinclair's famous predecessors as organist of Hereford Cathedral was the British composer called John Bull? 16th century, I think. Who is the emblem, the personification of Britain, traditionally? John Bull, with his big tummy with the Union Jack on it. And there's Dan, a bulldog. Could it be that there's a hint there that, that it's another thing about England? The variation about the two sisters, Winifred um, Norbury, who lived in this lovely house, and, and Winifred's laugh is enshrined in the music. She had this very infectious, rather irresistible laugh. Elgar himself said that the, the variation is more about the beauty of the house, the, the, the proportions and elegance of the house and what the house meant to him. The fascination of the work is that it contains these hints and nothing is ever made apparent and we could all play our own games with it. But above all, the great challenge is to listen and find something new in it. It's so brilliantly written for the instrument, the way he uses the different colours of the orchestra, just in little combinations. For instance, the one Isabel is about a woman who wanted to play the viola, and so the viola shines in this piece. But she had problems as a young girl in holding the bow and crossing the strings without touching the strings. It's hard with a long bow to get used to how you need to poise yourself to, to play the right string at the right time. It takes practice. She found that difficult. So he wrote, wrote a little variation for her that's all about crossing the strings. It involves the violas and then the solo viola in being prepared to do this. So it's like an affectionate caricature 
of what she found hard. In fact, the whole work is so affectionate. One of the things that occurs to me is, how did he pick the friends to include in the work? Is there something significant in the ones that he chose? Because there are plenty of very, very good friends who don't appear in the work. How did you gain a place in the Enigma Variations? There's the subject of 